A tectonic plate under Oregon is dying, being slowly ripped apart. This is the area of the subduction zone of Cascadia, the giant fault off the coast of the Pacific Northwest where the Juan de Fuca plate is plunging underneath the North American plate, the Pacific plate submerging under the North American plate and is building strain throughout the region. And this is causing, of course, talks about the big one earthquake when it ruptures. This is on Science Alert. David Neeld. The tectonic plate under Oregon is being slowly ripped apart. Juan de Fuca tectonic plate, not long for this world, in tectonic plate terms that is, because it's slowly sliding under the continent of North America. Geologists are hoping it can help solve one of the biggest mysteries in their field, how a tectonic plate dies. In other words, where is it going? It melts, and where does it go until then? The Juan de Fuca plate is the last remnant of the much bigger Phaleron plate, which has been disappearing under the North America plate for tens of millions of years. It's a perfect opportunity to study how plates eventually get swallowed up and how that might cause seismic and volcanic activity on the surface. Researchers William Hawley and Richard Allen from the University of California at Berkeley are interested in a gap that's appearing in the Juan de Fuca plate. And it may in fact represent a tearing of the plate away, way down below the surface. Quote, the tearing not only causes volcanism on North America, but also causes deformation of the not yet subducted sections of the oceanic plate offshore, quote. This is what they wrote in their research in the newly published paper. They say this tearing may eventually cause the plate to fragment, and what is left of the small pieces of the plate will attach to other plates nearby. All the rock that gets buried as a plate is subsumed, has to go somewhere else, and the large scale of deformations and breaks that can occur are not easy for scientists to predict or map. Using data from 217 earthquakes and more than 30,000 seismic waves, Hawley and Allen have been able to put together a detailed 3D picture of this particular part of the Cascadia subduction zone. They identified specific parts of the rock were from the Juan de Fuca plate. They found what looks like a tear more than 150 kilometers, that's 93 miles deep, and it matches a previously identified area of weakness on the Juan de Fuca plate at the surface known as a propagator wake. The researcher suggests that as the Juan de Fuca plate turns and twists, parts of it are being pulled off and separated, cut off that is, creating a gap that experts have observed. Some of it might even live on as part of another plate. More evidence is needed to be sure of what's happening there, but the hypothesis matches seismic activity around southern Oregon and northern California, as well as unusual patterns of volcanism in the region. Those unusual patterns are the volcanoes known as the high lava plains in southern Oregon, where the newest eruptions are at the wrong end of the series of where geologists would expect them to be, based on the direction of drift of the North American tectonic plate. Fresh volcanic activity caused by the propagator wake and the deeper weakness in the Juan de Fuca could perhaps explain this anomaly. This is what the researchers suggest in their hypothesis. As the Juan de Fuca disappears, further research as well as readings from the EarthScope project and the Cascadia initiative which were used in the study, should shed more light on how tectonic plates die and how they formed they were the world we live on. They say in many ways, when we're looking at these things, we're looking back in time. Seismologist Lara Wagner from the Carnegie Institute of Science, who was not in the, uh, involved, in, involved in the study, said, talking to National Geographic, she said, if we don't understand how these processes worked in the past, 
where we can see the whole story, study it, then our chances of seeing what's happening today and understanding how that might evolve in the future are zero. This research was published in Geophysical Research Letters, and it's on Science Alert. Now, we recently found that uh, we have a lot of activity on the Gorda Plate, which is part of the Juan de Fuca. It's the southern part. Basically, the earthquakes that we have at Petrolia, California, Northern California, Petrolia is right on the west coast. It's right at the horizontal part of the fracture on the Gorda Plate. And in that area, you have most of the high threat volcanoes at the subduction. So we have Mount Shasta, Lassen Peak, going from north to south. We have Clear Lake, volcanic field. Then we go down towards, for example, Long Valley Caldera, and Mount Whitney after that, south, south of that, also volcanic field, salt and buttes. But the area around Petrolia is having a lot of quakes. That's the Gorda Plate, located beneath the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Northern California, one of the northern remnants of the Phaleran Plate. The Phaleran Plate was an ancient oceanic plate that began subducting under the west coast of the North American Plate, then located in modern Utah. As Pangea broke apart during the Jurassic period, it's named for the Phaleran Islands, which are located just west of wherever. Anyway, that's part of the Phaleran Plate. It's sometimes referred to by, for example, publications from USGS Earthquake Hazard Program as simply the southernmost portion of the neighboring Juan de Fuca Plate, the Gorda Plate, that is, another Phaleran remnant. And unlike most tectonic plates, the Gorda Plate experienced significant interplate deformation in south its boundaries. Numerous faults have been mapped in both the sediments and basement of Gorda Basin. And we also have the axial uh, volcano, the sea volcano, the undersea volcano, also, the uh, other volcano, undersea volcanoes recently found just off Petrolia. Now, numerous faults have been mapped. Stresses from the neighboring North American Plate and Pacific Plate caused frequent earthquakes in the interior of the plate, including the 1980 Eureka earthquake, also known as the Gorda Basin event. The easterly side is a convergent boundary subducting under North American Plate in Northern California. The southerly side is a transform boundary with the Pacific Plate along the Mendocino Fault. The westerly side is a divergent boundary with the Pacific Plate forming the Gorda Ridge. And this ridge provides morphological evidence of differing spreading rates, with the northern part, portion of the ridge being narrow, the southern portion being wide. The northern side is a transform boundary with the Juan de Fuca Plate the Blanco Fracture Zone. The Blanco Zone is we also have there. We also have a new um, confirmed undersea volcano just off basically Petrolia. Recent seismicity. Well, the orphan tsunami. Let's go to 1996 study published by seismologist Kenji Satake. Supplementing the research by Atwater with tsunami evidence across the Pacific. Japanese annals, which have recorded natural disasters since about 600 AD, report of a 16 foot tsunami that struck the coast of Honshu Island during the Genroku. Since no earthquake had been observed to produce it, scholars dubbed it the orphan tsunami. Translating the Japanese calendar, Sataki found the incident had taken place around mid. 27, 28 of January, midnight, 1700, 10 hours after the earthquake occurred. The original magnitude 9 earthquake in the Pacific Northwest of the U.S., 1700. The Pacific Northwest, the west coast of the U.S., had thus occurred around 9 p.m. local time, 26 of January, 1700, and caused that ghost orphan tsunami. And now as a result of this, the geologists find that the 
mega quakes take place in that area every 300 years. Not every 500 years, but every 300 years. The last time this took place was 1700 and we're overdue for a big quake, a mega quake on the northern part of the uh, San Andreas area. And also, of course, we're expecting the big one in the southern portion of the San Andreas, as uh, confirmed over and over again by Dr. Lucy Jones, especially after the Ridgecrest earthquakes. She says, don't think that it's mitigated or lessened the southern San Andreas big one that we're waiting for, that it will take place. So, and also the middle part of San Andreas, middle part of California, is expected to take place as well. The geophysics Cascadia subduction zone is a 1,000 kilometer, 620 mile long dipping fault stretching from northern Vancouver Island to Cape Mendocino in Northern California and it separates the Juan de Fuca and North America plates. The new Juan de Fuca plate is created offshore along the Juan de Fuca Ridge. The plate moves towards and eventually shoved beneath the North American plate. The zone separates the Juan de Fuca plate, Explorer plate, Gorda plate and the North American plate, the oceanic crust of the Pacific Ocean sinking beneath the continent for about 200 million years and currently does so at a rate of about 40 millimeters per year. The depth shallower than 19 miles or so. At depth shallower than 19 miles or so, the Cascadia zone is locked by friction while strain slowly builds up as the subduction forces act until the fault's friction strength is exceeded and the rock slips past each other along the fault in a megathrust earthquake. Now, a megathrust earthquake occurs at subduction zone at distinctive convergent plates where one tectonic plate is forced underneath the other, causing, causing a slip along the thrust fault that forms the contact between them. These interplate earthquakes are the planet's most powerful. Now, below the 19 miles, the plate interface exhibits episodic tremors and slips. characterized by non-earthquake seismic rumbling or tremors and slow slip along the plate interface. The Cascadia subduction zone runs from triple junctions at its north and south ends to the north just below Haida Gwaii intersects the Queen Charlotte Fault in Canada and the Explorer Ridge into the south just off Cape Mendocino, California. It intersects the San Andreas Fault and the Mendocino Fault Zone at the Mendocino Triple Junction. Recent seismicity, slow earthquakes, megathrust earthquakes, interplate earthquakes, interplate earth, intraplate earthquakes. Unlike other subduction zones on Earth, Cascadia presently experiences low levels of seismicity, has not generated a megathrust earthquake since January 26, 1700. Megathrust meaning nine magnitude. Despite low levels of seismicity compared to other subduction zones, Cascadia hosts various types of earthquakes that are recorded by seismic, seismic and geodetic instruments such as seismometers, GNSS receivers. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, 
and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.